Hello and welcome back to another Sunvox tutorial. This is part two of my Sunvox for Programmers course. Today we're going to follow along one of my example projects so that you guys can get a feel for the workflow that we generally use in Sunvox. So to get started, make sure you have Sunvox open so you can follow along. And let's go ahead and create a new project and click on empty. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is create a generator. So we can double click inside the module view, click on analog generator and press OK. Then we're going to shift click drag to route this to the output. Let's create our generator similar to how we set it up in the previous tutorial so that it's for 8-bit music. We'll change the waveform to a square wave. And let's bring the duty cycle to halfway, which is about 250. So, now that we have that instrument created, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and modify our patterns in here. So last tutorial we didn't really go into the timeline and today we're going to do that. Right here we have a pattern and we have a line that moves from left to right when we play as you can see. So our patterns will be organized from left to right and that's how we're going to arrange our music. The first thing we're going to do is change the size of our default pattern here. The way we can do that is by double clicking to open the pattern properties. And you can see we have number of lines and number of tracks in the name of the pattern here. We can change the number of lines right here quite easily. So 64 would make the pattern double as long and etc. It's the same way. You can also shrink and expand, but we won't be using those today. Tracks are, um, if we go up here to our pattern editor, we can see how many tracks we have. So we currently have four, and each track represents one area in which we can input notes. And so if we, if we have four tracks, we can have four notes that play at the same time on one pattern and so on. So we'll keep it at four. That's great. So let's make our pattern 64 lines and now we have a longer pattern and we're going to start inputting notes. So I want you guys to follow pretty much directly because this will get you good at doing the very very basics and then you can start to figure out the program on your own with some more experimentation later. So go ahead and select your analog generator. Let's actually bring the volume of it down to say 50. And let's drag down here so we can see our pattern editor more. And let's select this very top left corner, press space to enter ad edit mode. And let's go ahead and input a note. The note we're going to input is an A that is on the third octave. So as you can see, we have the zero, first, second, third octave right here. And we can count from the C, C, D, E, F, G, A. There we go. There's an A. And uh, let's continue to add the rest of this pattern in for my example project. The next note is on the 16th line and it's going to be a G3. The next note is a C4. So that's right here. And then we're going to have an F3. Right there. I'm using the arrow, the up and down arrow keys to move up and down my cursor up and down on this pattern editor. It's pretty nice. You can also use the scroll wheel. Whatever you prefer. Alright, so let's move over to the next track. We'll select the notes axis and let's go ahead and add in some more notes. We're going to have a C4 on 
line 0. Then on line 16, we're going to have a B3, which is right underneath C4. Line 32 is going to be a E4. So that's up here, C, D, E. And then we have at last an A3. Just like that. And what what are we what are we creating here? Um, well, we have two notes playing at the same time now, and the effect that this is going to create is a chord. So let's actually listen to these two notes. That's pretty good, but how about we add some note stops? You can go ahead and click four lines before the next chord starts here on line 12. Enter edit mode with space. And we can hit the tilde key that's right next to the one. That way we can stop our instruments. To kind of shape the way these chords are played a little bit. Cool. So those are some pretty cool chords. Uh, generally when I'm writing a song, I start off with chords, but that's a personal preference. Some people like to start off with a melody, some people like to start off with a drum beat. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. Uh, make sure to create strong habits around that. Because habits are really useful when it comes to writing music. Alright, that's actually all we want to add with this instrument, um, let's go ahead and create a new module now. Double click, analog generator, OK, shift drag to the output. Now this module is going to be our base, it's going to be an instrument for our bass note. And in chiptune, generally we don't use a square wave for bass, although you can do that. We like to use a triangle wave, so just leave that on the default. And triangle waves, the duty cycle doesn't affect triangle wave. And so we're just going to pretty much leave this triangle how it is. Actually, let's bring the volume to 64. Um, we can double click on this module to open up module properties, similarly to how we opened pattern properties earlier. And let's uh, name it our base. We can also change the color here. We can drag it to a different color. That way it's distinguished from our initial module. So let's click on this and let's come up here and select our third track and we're going to add bass notes and bass notes are generally on the the bass note of a chord which is our lowest note so our lowest note here is an A3 that's lower than AC now with bass we're going to want to be playing on a di different octave though probably down in the first octave Let's use, um, instead of an A3, let's use an A1. Space to enter edit mode. And let's just kind of copy this side here. Let's do a G1. Let's do a C2. And an F1. Like that. And how about we add those note stops the same way we did before with our tilde key. There we go. And there we are. Now let's, uh, now that we have that, let's um, let's arrange this song a little bit so we have a little more than just seven seconds. To arrange music in Sandbox in the timeline, we can clone our patterns by either right clicking and pressing clone. And what that will do is it'll automatically move a child pattern to the right of this. This child pattern, um, as you can see, has a line going to the parent pattern, 
and is also slightly faded out. And you can click and drag to move them around. And this child pattern um, will always be the same as the parent pattern, and the parent pattern will always be the same as the child pattern. So that means if we make a change in here, whether we have the child or the parent pattern selected, the change will be made universally. You can also click to drag and make a selection box and use shortcuts. When you select them, you can move them all at once. You can use Control D to clone these patterns or clone your entire selection at once like that. Let's go ahead and just leave four though, including the parent pattern. So let's select and delete all of these with the delete key. Press yes. All right, now, um, Instead of cloning our pattern this time though, let's actually move two of these clones. Let's actually copy and paste our pattern and select your parent pattern, do control C, control V. And what that does is uh, we have created a new parent pattern that is the same as our old one, as you can see. Um, and we can change this pattern without it changing this pattern. They are independent from each other now. So let's select this new pattern. Let's double click on it and make sure it has four tracks because when you duplicate a pattern it removes any track that doesn't have anything in it. And let's select our original chiptune module and let's create a melody. I want you to just follow along with this melody. It's going to be a little bit harder to follow because we're going to be using um, a few different rhythms here. So let's start off. Let's see. We're going to be in the fourth and fifth octave here, right here. And we're going to start on line four with a G4. Then let's move down two lines to number six. Uh, when you input a note, it'll automatically move down one line uh, based on the amount of step you have selected up here in this corner. It defaults at one though. Uh, let's actually change ours to two to make this a little easier on ourselves. On line six, we're gonna have a B4. On line eight, we're gonna have a C5. Then we're going to skip down to line 12 with our arrow keys and do a B4, C5, and D5, like that. Alright, let's go down to line 28 now. Yes, that's where it is. We have a C5, a D5, and an E5. And then uh, we have some fast notes here, um, all bunched together. On line 33, we have an F. And on line 34, we'll move up, we have back to an E again, like that. Now to finish this line, we have on line 40, we have a D a D5. On line 44, we have a C5, so that's four away from our other one. C5, B4, and A4. It goes down like that. So just go ahead and duplicate that onto yours, and let's play it and see what it sounds like. And there you go, you have a very basic melody. Let's clone our pattern with Control D. And now our song is 30 seconds long. If we play from the very beginning, we have some chords here at the beginning and some chords with a melody at the end. 
That's all for today. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.